Uh, people know that Russia has been buying buying gold uh, for a long time. They were buying it like crazy for a very, very long time here. What their end game is going to be, I here, here's the thing. Uh, for any nation to back their currency with gold, although this is a great idea, it would be creating a wealth-based system. And that would surrender control. And I think if in fact any nation on earth were to go to uh, a commodity backed system, they would they would unfortunately endure the entire US military might coming down on them as hard as you can possibly imagine. Uh, being that the the dollar is the world reserve, the, the Federal Reserve is the strongest, the strongest uh, central bank on the planet, bar none, uh, and they do have the entire United States military arsenal behind it. We've seen this before. We've seen world leaders get taken out um, on the back of their wanting to support a commodity-backed system. Uh, and I believe that we would absolutely fight a world war, probably on, on a nuclear scale, if in fact any nation on the world tried to circumvent the debt-based system that has been in place for a very, very long time. Uh, again, that any kind of a currency backed by gold would, would transform a debt-based system into a wealth-based system and give the power to the people. And, and that would be fought with such ferocity by central banks that I, I don't think any one nation on earth would stand that they would probably kill half the population of the world just to make sure that the, the debt-based system stays in effect. That's that's how dramatic, I mean, look what we did. They fought, the entire Vietnam War was fought to establish the petrodollar fiat monetary system. How many people did they have to kill there? They'll kill a lot more. They don't, they, we don't matter. We are a means to an end. We, they would just splatter our guts all over the place. Uh, and and I, I've been telling people for, the, for many years that the debt-based economic system is the greatest threat to humankind, bar none, because we would see what we are seeing now um, at one point here, uh, again, they don't care what they have to do. They're going to continue to do this to inflate. That's how they keep their strength. And with the Federal Reserve having the United States military arsenal, all of it, backing them, it's tough to beat. That's uh, talking about gold. Silver is also on a lot of people's minds and has been for some time. I know you've talked about it for well, most of a decade. Uh, JJL says, Greg, I've heard you indicate that you prefer silver, but have never heard you explain why. Would love to hear your reasons. Sure. It's so, so I look at three things. Well, I would look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, look at the price of gold and the price of silver. Okay. I sincerely believe what I'm going to tell you, and I've been saying this, I might be even said it on your show before. At one point, this stock market is going to fall. And I'm not talking about 10, 15, 20% like we're seeing now. I believe sincerely that there is a great possibility that we're going to see the S&P 500 fall 80%, 80% from where we are. Okay. Now, what, what that would mean for, for the Dow? Well, it's also going to take a hit, like about an 80% hit. Okay. So if we look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average falling, let's say 80% from where it is, wherever that would come to, I believe that we are going to get a Dow or Dow Jones Industrial Average gold ratio, at least one to one, maybe even two to one favoring gold. Now, so what are we talking about? We're talking about a gold price. I mean, I can't do the math off the top of my head, but it's probably not too hard to figure out. Um, if we do get gold at one point, even equivalent to the Dow, which would fall, let's say 80% from where it is, uh, and the silver to gold ratio normalized somewhere around 15 to 1. You can just imagine what this means for the price of, of, of precious metals here because it's just very simple to me. I look at things in terms of what's happening in the debt market, number one. Right now, the debt market, despite everything we're seeing, is pretty stable because debt is being pulled from the future. Arms deals going on all over the place like you alluded to. I want people to look into this. Look at the arms deals that are going on. Nations are feverishly uh, seeking deals with each other. We're talking about weaponry in the, in, the, in the hundreds of billions of dollars. This is all going around. The first big arms deal was one that President Biden made with, with Poland for a $6.2 billion tank deal. Now we're, we're sending Ukraine another $10 billion, which is going to balloon up to $32.5 billion. Uh, and that's probably just the first installment. And this is going on everywhere. Um, 
hundreds and hundreds of millions in the billions of dollars. It's a, it's, it's a crazy situation. But understanding, again, that, look, the stock market is volatile. It's not for everybody. What we're seeing right now is getting a lot of people rattled, but we're not seeing anything dramatic, really, honestly. Um, the big one is going to be when we get that meltdown in the in the debt market. Like I'm not, I'm, I know that's how it's going to start off. The, the stock market derives value from the debt market. If we realize that is going on, that makes the stock market a derivative. Okay, if that's the case. You know, look what's been happening. You got the Federal Reserve, who's been artificially suppressing rates and printing cash out of, out of thin air to buy the debt, to monetize the debt now since the last meltdown here. This has propped up a stock market into a massive bubble. So at one point, we're going to get an implosion here. And that's just going to put pressure on the stock market. Cash is going to move from one set of assets into another. That's all it's going to do. It's going to go from risk on, meaning cash going into equities, to risk off, cash going into physical gold or gold and silver, obviously, it's an insane system understanding that the hard asset gets its value from a derivative. It's upside down, but that's how it works. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3,000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.